Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. The grand finale of our journey through the albums of 1975. We've gone through three episodes worth of music and all we have left is my top 10 favorites. Let's get started. At number 10 is the original Broadway soundtrack to The Wiz. Despite 1975 also being the year of a chorus line and Chicago, this soulful adaptation of The Wizard of Oz is where my Broadway loyalties lie. This is one of the few albums of 75 that I actually own. Every one of these tracks is solid, but my favorites are The Feeling We Once Had, Ease On Down the Road, and Everybody Rejoice. Our only contemporary Christian release to make the countdown is at number nine, Andre Crouch and the Disciples, Take Me Back. Thanks to my dad, I've been listening to these songs all my life. This is a beautiful collection of gospel with just a dab of pop and R&B in the mix. Just Like He Said He Would is one of their best, but every track here is a standout. 75 was also the year of their best of album, which is incredible as well. At number eight, Paul Simon, who is still crazy after all these years. He takes on a variety of musical styles here, including, speaking of, gospel. Gone At Last features Phoebe Snow and the Jesse Dixon Singers. Uh, the title track joins 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover as the most familiar songs here. It's a solid addition to his already impressive catalog. Willie Nelson is in the number seven spot with his album Red Headed Stranger. This is beautiful stuff. The instrumentation is relatively sparse so that Willie and his guitar are front and center. The melodies are simple and memorable. Coming into this album, I was only familiar with Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain, which was his first number one hit, which is of course the best thing here, but there's not a bad track in the bunch. My new other favorites are Can I Sleep in Your Arms Tonight and Remember Me When the Candle Lights Are Gleaming. Willie had two greatest hits collections this year as well, Country Willie and What Can You Do to Me Now. At number six is the self-titled Fleetwood Mac LP, often referred to as the White Album. I'm not sure I've ever listened to a full Fleetwood Mac record before, but I simply loved this one. There were plenty of familiar songs along the way. Landslide is here, uh, along with Rhiannon and Say You Love Me, those I didn't recognize by name, but I have known uh, for years. Though Rumors is their most famous release uh, to come later, I feel like this is just as good, if not better. Oops, I did it again. I left out another very important album when I filmed these episodes. I apologize. So right here between five and six, we're going to squeeze in Tom Waits and his album Nighthawks at the Diner. Filmed in a recording studio, but with a live audience, you get the best of both worlds. The real sense that you're in a smoky jazz club, but also a great sound. It's a good collection of songs, but his banter in between the songs is what really seals the deal. Tom Waits is funny, dark, a little absurd. He has an incredible way with words, and this album perfectly captures an experience with this musical genius. It just completely slipped my mind that this was from 1975, so I apologize profusely and send you back now to the countdown as originally filmed. Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here begins our top five. I'm not well versed in Pink Floyd's catalog, so this was a valuable experience to absorb a classic album from start to finish, and I love that it's designed to be listened to that way as a whole. I especially enjoyed the beginning and the end, the lengthy sweet shine on you crazy diamond. At number four is Physical Graffiti by Led Zeppelin. As a double album, this was a lot to take in especially for me who doesn't listen to Zeppelin very often, but they are amazing at what they do. Cashmere for sure is a classic, it is here, but they shine on just about every track. Uh, it's safe to say this album seriously rocks. My third favorite is Bob Dylan's Blood on the Tracks. I've recently done a deep dive into the early Dylan albums. His recordings are kind of a mixed bag for me, but I definitely agree that he's a poetic genius. This is a rather strong album, though, possibly one of his bests as a whole. The most familiar tracks are my favorites, Tangled Up in Blue and Shelter from the Storm. On previous albums, I usually start to snooze when his songs surpass five or six minutes in length, but the few times that happens here, it's with rather lively songs, which solves that problem. As I mentioned before, this was also the year he put out the basement tapes with the band. 
Only two left. Our next to last album is Bruce Springsteen, Born to Run. I've always loved his albums, but my previous exposure was really with Born in the USA and Beyond. So I was excited to experience this classic and it did not disappoint. My favorite tracks are those I was most familiar with, Thunder Road and Born to Run. Several songs stretched my assumption of what a track from The Boss should sound like in the best way possible. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, my favorite album of 1975 is Queen, A Night at the Opera. This is the only other one on the list besides The Wiz that I already owned, so I've enjoyed it for many years. Queen is so versatile here musically and lyrically. Uh, and three of the four band members get a turn on lead vocals. My favorites continue to be the obvious Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, along with Love of My Life and 39. I hope you had as much fun with this as I did. Uh, lists like this are entirely subjective. If there's a favorite of yours I left off or didn't do justice to in the rankings, be sure to let me know. I love to have follow-up conversations about these sorts of things. At some point in the future, I'll be back with my take on the films and albums of 1976. Until then, thanks for watching. In the